It really started to happen when my brother was murdered. Only a few times have I actually seen something like out in 3D space. And it's usually like before a major dramatic event. I, I've always felt psychic and I could talk to my parents about certain things, but there was a lot of other things going on too. And I didn't understand why I felt so different than everybody else and why I didn't fit in. So ideas pop into my head, okay? So I just happen to know when it's my idea and when it's something I'm getting from the other side. I felt separation. I felt I'm, I'm this freak that's walking around on this earth and I just, I just want to fit in. And I want to say for all the aspiring psychics and mediums out there, get ready because your shit's going to hit you in the face. Amanda, obviously Amanda Green, and she's going to tell us all about herself and her story and her books and everything. And um, Michelle Gray, of course, at the Healing H. Doc, uh, I mean dash. Why do I do that, Michelle? Dash art. Dot com. <laughs> we'll have all here. And Hi, who's that other person? Who's that other person? Maybe Eric Matus. Yes. He says, "What's happening, everybody? Love you, Mama." He says, "Hi, Amanda." <laughs> Erica, oh. uh, I talked to Renuka today on a session. I haven't posted it yet, but he is teaching us how to connect first to him because apparently he's easy to connect with. And I don't know. Amanda, do you try to connect with him at all? You know, I think, Eric, talk to me here. Like, I think we connect. You know, I'm still a, a trusting. He and I, he and I, I feel him all the time. I feel um, him. He's, he's there when I need him most. It's very sweet. Oh, that's that is what Renuka said. The exact oh. same thing. It's so interesting. Wow. Oh. Um, he says he I does, Amanda. Just, just to Eric. tell you, he was telling me right before the show we were talking about you and your abilities, and really? um, he says that you. Yes, he says that you have abilities, I knew and it. Um, he says he goes, oh yeah, he goes. I connect with her because he was talking a lot about um, your energy and how you're very empathic and you actually have a lot of sensitivity. I'm sure you know this. Uh, um, you know yeah. what, Michelle? I do. But it's like I'm one of those people who I'm slowly working into it. Like, yes, I do. I can feel it. It's it's the bait of my existence, but if I learn to, to channel it properly, I, I will get it. It'll yeah. help a lot of people, I think. Oh, yeah. you already you are already helping a lot of people. Now, I do, want to announce, you know, I do want to announce that Eric has given me some cool new services um, for the Scalar that I thought, are you kidding me? Really? You can do this? And, uh, you know, we're already doing a lot of this, but the ones we have not done, and I'll call out the stuff, is cognition and memory, PTSD, Ooh. weight optimization for pets and humans. I love that. Hormone new. Balancing, which will help the skin, migraines, stress headaches, diabetes one, including the autoimmune attack, stopping that. Diabetes two, uh, optimizing the immune system, pain. Now we already have, uh, you know, the lower body, uh, the whatever, the hips to the neck, through the neck, but knees, ankles, and feet. Eyesight, uh, dental cure and prevention, ADHD, fibromyalgia, stress headaches. And bringing love, I did not expect this, into your life. Making sure your life partner enters your life. But the one I like the best is a replacement for exercise. Hell yeah. <laughs> I hate oh, to hear it. Own, 
Well, y'all, I mean, stay tuned. I'm going to eventually, you know, ask for volunteers. Don't tell me now because I'm just a little old lady that's, you know, easily overwhelmed. So, but I will, I will, I like to on social media and stuff. Anyway, without any further ado, the stage is yours, Amanda. I love you dearly. And I want to hear, everybody wants to hear your story about your book, your, your radio oh. show, everything. Yeah. You are sure. Yeah. You know what? First, let me take this opportunity to say, Elisa, I absolutely love and adore you, and it is my absolute pleasure to be here with you both ladies and to meet you, Michelle. This is yes. amazing. <laughs> you know, I- I'm going to preface this with I met Elisa. Elisa and Eric <laughs> have actually been on my blog talk radio show that I that I used to have. I'm now on Mental Health News Radio um, with a show called Hold Fast Radio. Light, or, uh, I was going to say light. <laughs> Whole awesome. Pack Radio, um, Ride Out Life, Life, Life with Mental Illness. Um, <laughs> so that's my new, that's my newest gig. But um, you know, Eric sent uh, Eric. God, it was it was not long, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, after you started, I know. I, yeah, it was it's about 2010 or tw- no 12, and um, I was led to you. There's no doubt by Mr. Eric and you and I. I wrote to you, and you wrote back saying, wow, what a beautiful letter. Thank you so much. And so we've had this ongoing friendship ever since, even yeah. though we've never been able to have the opportunity to meet in person. But well, we And will. I have – oh, I know it. Oh, I know it. And um, let's see. What can I say? I, I am a mental health awareness advocate, and everything in my life has sent me here, all the survival, everything I've overcome, everything I live through has brought me here. It's almost like – um, <laughs> I was gonna make a silly joke. I'll pass on it. Okay, but it's like, no, we're in a silly. This is a silly video. I know, I know. No, 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 no. Like, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. First, I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. So, and I want. You know, I was shit out of luck. I was in a really rough place. And um, mm-hmm. oh. what happened was about 10, 15 years back, I have bipolar disorder. So I've, I've been there. I've been in the, the doldrums. I've been up on, up on the t- top of the Eiffel Tower going, woo, I can fly. You know, I've been all around. <laughs> I, I know yeah. the gamut. I've been, I've been hospitalized. I've been here. I've been there. And somehow, ladies and listeners, I'm still here. And I'm here Mm -hmm. with this unbelievable mission, and I feel it in my bones, um, to help people. Because I have this unique perspective, and I'm not tooting my own horn. It's just very factual. The whole thing is I not only have rapid cycling bipolar disorder, but I have overcome it. Um, Not overcome completely. I live with it, but at the same Mm -hmm. time, I have a third-person perspective of it. And I feel like I can look at it from three different angles. And so I offer, I can offer people help from the perspective of me and from the perspective of the outsider. Well, mm-hmm. let me ask so you that, a question, Amanda. Are yeah. there some positive things? Of, I hate to call bipolar disorder. I don't know. It's just, yeah. to, to me, just, I might be wrong because, you know, I don't know shit. But <laughs> can there be some positive stuff by being bipolar? Oh, my God. Like, a lot I of people are kind of too angry and stuff. It's like, is it truly a disorder, Amanda? Or is it just right, another well, way of being? I think it's another way of being. I love that you said that. I think it's considered, it's very hard to understand for someone who has not experienced it, either first, second, third person, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's another, I see. I find it, it's a gift. In mm-hmm. my life, it's a gift. It's a gift. I've been through the hell I went through, and everybody has their own hell. You know, it's not like yeah. I had my, the hell. I, it's a gift. I, there's nothing I like more than helping people. I really don't. Oh, I love it. I, I love this it. This is why yeah. I love this girl. I, oh, please, can I adopt you? Bring over your papers. Oh, yes. Let's get this shit done. You Seriously. Got it. Yeah. No, no, listen. It, there's nothing. I taught my whole, you know, I've taught for years, and it's kids. Like, I just identify with them. They, sad lonely kids, kids oh, who man. need extra and kids who are like, oh, shit, I have no idea what to do next. I don't know who I am. I don't know how do I identify. I seem mm-hmm. to gravitate toward them because I get it. I was that kid. 
And yeah. I think the bipolar disorder just exacerbated all of that. And and uh, it's become my mission to just be like, you know what? You can do this. You t- you've got it. You've got this. You know what kind of reminds me of, Amanda? What? Amanda, what reminds me of ADHD, which is called a disorder, but it's just a constant mm-hmm. style. It's just society's mm-hmm. disorder. It's society mm-hmm. that's disorder because they want us all to be lined up in our desk in little rows and pay attention. Mm-hmm. They want us all to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, what not the uh, not hunters but gatherers. Okay, but oh. unfortunately, there are two cognitive styles. There's the gatherer who can stay in those little rows, who can really pay attention and focus, which is great. But there's also we have to have the hunter cognitive style. And they're impulsive because they have to be ready to jump their prey, okay? Yeah. And they have to be distra- you know, stay distracted, but they scan their environment for their prey, but also they scan their internal environment a lot, so they seem like they're in la-la land all the time, whatever. Um, mm. so, so it's a cognitive stuff. So I think bipolar disease, disease, I hate that, bipolar condition is society ah. disorder. Because, they, because just because of a lack of freaking understanding and it's silly eric agrees with that eric eric is saying at least he's, he's like mom but that's exactly right that's exactly oh. it he says and, and this is a time that it's time to re reframe and use these labels as not labels he says we use these terms to have like a vehicle of understanding to understand hmm. something to understand a way of thinking a way of being but he's like doing right now he's like cutting up labels and throwing them behind him and he says enough with trying to have everybody fit into these slots of this is what's normal and he says it's it's better he loves the ability part of things and he also says amanda too that you have an ability to be deeply creative and that a lot of people with bipolar he's doing that in quotations um (laughs) have this real depth of creativity and he says a variety of yeah. Hmm. Until, until we I, bring them down, until we destroy them, that's the problem. And look at the people who channel, who have auditory hallucinations, who are in, oh, you know, yeah. who are institutionalized. So, you know, we we have got to be very mindful of what society is doing to people, labeling them mm-hmm. and destroying them systematically. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Amanda. What do you think? No, no. I was simply going to say, Elisa. And Eric and Michelle, like, mm-hmm. that's spot on. 1,000%, mm-hmm. It in my humblest of opinions and in my experience, I called every ridiculous pharmaceutical pill that was uh. popped, shoved down my throat for years little blue and pink imagination slayers. Like, they suck. Oh. They, they rip the personality out of the human. They rip the creativity out of the human. They are, mm-hmm. are are used. I'm getting a little crazy here, but a little political. Mm-hmm. Almost, I don't even. I won't use politics. But, no, I know. No, um, I know. I know. <laughs> no, it's used they want us to make us into help, helpless they drones, to like these real, yes. real creeps. Yeah. Yeah. And Eric, you're so right. Get rid of the. You know, it's like that's why I say it's a gift because you know what? I am really creative, and I can. Mm-hmm. So I can take this problem. It's not a problem. I can take this life. I've chosen and I can use it to help others who don't aren't quite there yet and don't get it to feel better. You know, mm-hmm. give them hope. Mm-hmm. All right. I you think know? that you would be a very good addition to, Oh, my big dream. One of my big dreams. I have a lot of them, but one of my biggest <laughs> is to start an online uh, school for children, spiritual online school. Yes. 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 I would love that. Well, not only oh, just meditation yes. and, and how to heal yourself energetically, and all that about the human experience, blah, 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 how to channel, but also things like what you have to offer. You, you could be a great yeah. teacher, and, and you could obviously make money on it, and, you know, because I, we, we would pay everyone to help save the yeah. world because these are the seeds, man. Dealing with the kids, that is my hope. It's like you know, I'll be long gone by the time these seeds start to sprout, but I want to leave this earth knowing that I, I, I and others helped to plant the seeds to help this new generation of children shepherd in mm. a new age, a wonderful, beautiful age of Aquarius, etc. Oh, oh, yeah. Totally. 
I love you. Alisa, I, Lisa, I would, that would be my pleasure and privilege. I'll tell you what, I, I would jump right in there and give you a hand. I love that. Okay, well, let me talk a little bit about I'm just saving up money. I'm saving up money, guys. I'm saving up money for the web person to, I mean, because I, I need animation to get Eric, Professor Eric. And all. So it's going to be really fun, though. Oh, I love it. I love that idea. I have a, your, your first customer is going to be uh, River Demeter, my daughter. She would love that. She is so tuned in. Oh, She's, she was, that would be awesome. doing? I mean, I did portal work on you guys. Did it do okay? Oh, she's one. She's doing great. Everybody's well, and I wanted to plug your scholar work. Oh, um, thank the you. Work. What's your Can name? Can I talk about it for a moment? What is it, Frank? Right? Oh, Frank. Yeah, Frank's doing really well. Oh my God, I can't he's... believe I remembered his name because you guys, your you're family good. Has an impact on me. Uh, oh. you know, my memory baseline is really sucky. But yeah, go ahead if you want. The scholar work. The labor of love. You know, okay. I want to tell everybody out there um, that the scholar, the the spirit work, the the energy work that Elise has been doing. I was one of her first. Yeah. First, um, when she started working with the dowsing rods and she started working with the energy, I was one of her first people last summer, and I, it profoundly changed my life. I don't mean I woke up and I felt different. I mean. In hindsight, when I look at the way energy flowed around me and how things gravitated toward me or I pushed things away without even knowing it, it, it helped with that. Like I'm attracting better things, better thinking, and better creativity to me, more focus. Yeah, abundance. yeah, you had a bunch of closed portals that needed to be open. And so now that they're open, creativity, financial abundance, love abundance, health wow. abundance, everything. And Frank. I was very concerned about him. Yeah. Is he okay? He, what, I'm sorry? Is Frank okay? I was always concerned a little bit about him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's actually doing really well. So and it's no it's no big uh, mystery. He also is bipolar, which gives me a very interesting perspective. We are totally, <laughs> di- totally different. Um, and he has dealt with a major addiction issues. And he is doing so well. He's getting back into... He's working in a, a garden, um, in a greenhouse right now, and just with the life Wonderful. and the sprout, oh. and he was, he, it, it makes him feel so good. And he's a tree guy. He was a tree guy by trade for years. He was an arborist. Oh, so, really? so oh. yeah, so he's like, oh, yeah, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, That's okay. so cool. And he, he feels good. He's waking up in the morning. We have our coffee every morning, and we, and he's just, he feels good. Like, we're, we're doing really well. I'm and so I, I, oh my God, I feel like crying. But you uh, know, um, well, now we have the new relief from addictive substances and behaviors. Mm-hmm. So I would mm-hmm. love to do that for Frank if you want me to, but yes. if he has to go, if not, but, but you connect with me and let me know. But it's available, guys, and it works so great. I'm going to oh, have please. a I, moment here, guys. Okay. And okay. don't scroll around, even though I know I'm talking to a lot of people here. After Eric died, I mean, I really never drank before, right? After oh, Eric died, oh. that's when, boom, the next day, oh. two glasses of wine every single day. And then oh. about three months ago, I started, like, discovering scotch. And oh. it was a slippery freaking slope, and I was scared. I was so scared. I <sighs> did not want to die of cirrhosis, okay? So, anyway, oh. I did the... Uh, experiment on myself with the addiction thing and it's like it was a miracle I, it's like I don't care at all about alcohol it's like I finally feel free at last and you know this has been wow. one of the number one scary things for me and my the number one thing that made me feel hopeless and sick and scared uh, mm. you know, and it's gone now it's freaking gone and so I would love to do that for Frank but anyway I <laughs> I want you to share about your book and your oh, radio and, and whatever you want. Uh, okay. First of all, the cover is amazing. All. The cover is freaking amazing. Thank you. Which mm-hmm. one are you talking about? The um, the first one. Well, you the, tell. You uh, tell. Paging Doctor. Paging Doctor Friedman. What's the other one's name? Hold fast. No, hold fast. The That's knuckles. the one. Oh, I love that's amazing. Right? Yes. 
But where, where did you get where did you get the title uh, "Paging Dr. Freeman" from? I just love that. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, in in the story, guys, "Paging Dr. Freeman," and I didn't know this at the time, but I loved Mash, and I did not know that was the name of one of the episodes. Isn't that funny? <laughs> what? Um, oh my the, god! Yes. Okay, the whole story of paging Dr. Friedman is paying homage to my psychiatrist who saved my life. Right. And I don't even yeah. I don't even know if he knows this, but uh, I sent him a book, but that doesn't mean he read it. He, um, his name is is not Dr. Friedman. It's it's Dr. Freimer. He's a wonderful man, and he was the one wow. who cut the sh- just cut the shit in my life. Maybe get over myself. And he he said awesome. to me, you know what, Amanda. Yeah, he's a he's really brainy, and he's got these like both sides of his brain working. He's got a left and right. He's a, a concert pianist, but he's oh, like no, a that clinical. Was Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I love <laughs> it. He's a clinic, and he's a psychiatrist. So anyway, the dude is wonderful, and he means the world to me. And um, I haven't seen him in years. He he left. He fell in love, and and went to uh, this little adorable. <laughs> wonderful Jewish man from New York City uh, fell in love with a woman from Salt Lake City. <laughs> oh. and, uh, I know, and he moved out there, and I was so happy for him. And, and I said, "Is she Mormon?" And he laughed, and you know the whole thing. Um, <laughs> long story short, paging Dr. Friedman when when I was like losing my cool, I used to call it a case of the crazies in my mind, <laughs> or when I would write a letter, which the the book is based on a series of letters, I would say, Oh, paging Dr. Friedman. Like would be like paging Dr. Frymer. Like, uh Oh, oh I I my God. I so love that, it. It was that, that's where it came from, Michelle. That's yeah. awesome. I love that Thank story. You. That, the book is really, I'm really proud of that book because that book was, um, it was another book. It was a book I wrote in 2009 called Dear Prudence, like the Beatles song. Oh, and, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, and so that, I wrote yes, it, I that one. And, and I wrote that from the corner of my parents' couch. I was teaching, and it, for the first time in my life, I had I felt really good about life. Like, I was teaching in a high school. I was happy, and I started having schizophrenic weird stuff happen. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, I had to leave my job. Uh, mid-year and it was you know exacerbated by other things but I, I ended up I, I left an apartment I drove to my parents house I, I and I didn't leave for like three they must have wanted to absolutely strangle me three months um, and I fell apart and I was hospitalized and um, yeah. but that was when I met Dr. Fre- Freimer aka paging yeah. Dr. Friedman and mm-hmm. uh, I wrote myself out of that place I wrote, I sat down with a pen and paper, oh. a pen and paper, and I wrote letters, letters to, to family, letters to people, friends I've lost because I, I couldn't communicate properly, friends, uh, people I admired, like Jimi Hendrix. And, uh, oh, I, Eric I, mm. I know he does. And uh-huh. I wrote letters to people here and gone, and and when I started to heal, and I started working again. I got a job at a, a wonderful Irish or a English pub, and I started to feel better about myself. I looked at this pile of incredible letters to people here and gone, and I was like, "Holy shit, Scamoli! This could be a fabulous helping aid, a tool for people." And that's when I crafted the story around it. So it's based wow. very based very much on my own experience in letters, um, but uh, the story, the frame story crafted around it, is a really funky, trippy. Uh, existential journey to the Florida Keys for the main character to meet her demise unsuccessfully. And she is puppeteered by a ghost, <laughs> not a ghost, an angel named Gabriel, not a Gabe, but a Gabe nonetheless, who is kind of puppeteering her existence. And so you see the story from three different perspectives and it, the, the letters tell her story. Wow. Uh, so that was Dear Prudence, oh. Michelle, but so what happened was that was 2009. I had fun. That was great. Last or 2019, I fell. I was actually, I think, pushed by a energy down the stairs. Do you remember this, Elisa? Oh God, yes. And you, uh, and uh, I told you, I think I told you that they didn't want you to die. They wanted you. Yeah, to they die. wanted to hurt me. They wanted to hurt you. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to die because they wanted to like bleed, glom off your fear, yeah. your pain, and all that shit. Yeah, I know. It's incredible. So you know what I did? 
I had this god awful concussion. It was so intense. And, oh. But I was like, the hell with you. I, instead of laying there, I wrote another book. I laid in bed and I took Dear Prudence and said, you know what? This story has changed. This has been 10 years. This is a whole new book. And I crafted it into paging Dr. Friedman. And it pays yeah. homage to him because he's really the hero of my story. So, uh, well, one of many heroes. But um, uh, it's incredible. He, Thank you. So that was what I did when I, so it was like a 10 year anniversary and I'm like, all right, I've got a new book. And since then, and since the work with, um, with, uh, with Elisa's work this summer, I've just been prolific in writing self-help. Um, I wrote two books. It, uh, uh, it's hold fast. Okay. So the knuckles on the front of the book. I love are my that. husband's hand. Thank you. It's my husband's oh. hand. Hold fast. Wow. And we used to, and so I made it into an acronym to get through it all. And uh, what's the acronym stand <laughs> for? Well, for on the the original acronym was honest, open, logical discussion for all schools of thought. That was Frank's ac- acronym. But the acro- Thank great. you. But the acronym I came up with there's eight steps to get through. It's like um, uh, honesty. Um, I'm trying to find. I want to read. Here we go. I can tell you exactly. Would you like to hear, ladies? Yes, yes. ma'am. Plus, I think you right. have to do a hand model. Okay, I'm just saying. Go ahead. I know. He's got he's got cool hands, does he not? He does. <laughs> yes, of course, he does. Of course, he's very embarrassed by that now. He's horrified because he's not a showy oh, person. He's like, now I have God. to oh. – now he has to change – he's going to say he's going to change it to old fart. <laughs> well, <Anyway. laughs> so let me tell you, ladies – um, hold on. I had to turn a light on because I can't see a damn thing in my room. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Okay. So, uh, okay, hold fast is very interesting. H is for honest. And this is the first step in my methodology I've come up with to help people. Um, yeah. H is for honest. Transparency is the key to cope. Mm. O is for open a dialogue. Explore your illness. Mm. You got to talk. You got to talk about it. No, well, you're so right. L is for look. L is for look to your heart, not your cluttered mind. You've got to be Mm -hmm. heart-based. D is for discern. This one was a really big one for me. Discern triggers with logic for clarity. Like you got to think of what it is that triggers your mood, triggers your addiction, Mm -hmm. triggers all that stuff. And you have to, Mm -hmm. you have to actually get into a logical space and think about it. Um, F, F is for face anxiety and dive in. Um, wow. Let's see. Uh, A, A is for anticipate fear, expect, embrace, and experience it. And that's a big one because people are oh, yeah. scared and fear is so limiting and you got to just mm-hmm. expect it, embrace it. Um, yeah. It's, I know easier said than done, but wow, it really works. Yeah. S is for S is for step up. To your family challenges. Yeah. You, you got to make that step. Um, T is for trust the process and That's trust yourself. One. That's a hard one. Oh. oh, my God. It's so hard. So, I, yeah. you know, I, but I sat there and I really thought it through, gut ladies. Like, I was like, hold fast. I'm so inspired by those hands, like those knuckles and how That's what he endured. And, I have and to tell you, Amanda, that yeah. that, that – um, as I'm like, I'm writing this down and Eric is talking to me and saying like, this is the basis of all healing. This oh, is, nice, Eric. This Whoa. is the basis of all healing. And he says, you can take this and apply it to anything. It's the See, basis. It next has book. to come. Next book. That's the next book. Yeah. Hmm. It's a, that's amazing. It's amazing. That's cause he's be been showing me how important that is to heal, whether it's trauma or to transform your life, this is what you need to do to meet whatever he says, wherever you're at in your life Mm. right now. He says, these are the steps to take. So this could be applied to so much because he's like, bravo, bravo. All right, Eric, thank you. Very good. Give him an air. I'm sending him an air kiss. (laughs) (laughs) I love him so much. I love him so yeah. much. He's given well, me hugs at the most. In I felt them like he's just so sweet. He's so good, yeah. and he's such a he's such a wise and high burn. I just love his 
his sardonic and <laughs> he's funny too. He's a funny guy. Oh. Rascal. He's my little he's rascal. Your boy, Lisa. My little rascal. Oh. He is your oh, rascal. He is um, wonderful. Is something that you can apply this to a broader type of thing. Um, I think. I mean, I don't know, Eric. What do you think? Say that again. Sorry. That 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 she can apply these amazing tenets of hers to to, to not just to go beyond mental illness. Oh, and, yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, yeah. that's funny. Hey, Eric or Michelle, ask or mm-hmm. ask, I'm asking you to ask Eric, but you're right mm-hmm. there with. Did I channel this? Did I channel this? Oh, yes. Or was this? Yes. I was gonna yes, ask that. Yes. 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 No yes, way. Did, Amanda, like, he has given me a little bird's eye view of your path and uh-huh. just how divine your entire path truly is. And I'm wow. sure you must know that. You must feel that because there's so much. Because um, I, I asked him if this was part of your contract to experience this, and he said, yes, it is. Um, he says Ow. that, you know, he, he says there's there's different people in the world that maybe have similar things that they could do because he says if you look at the collective consciousness he says spirit dropping in some of these purposes that we can do with Hmm. like mental illness with um healing and he says Uh but not everybody takes that and then runs Uh with it and he says that you have the warrior spirit and you are the healer you are a healer and so Sweet. he says it was your purpose to heal yourself, to dig in deep and to heal your own journey and to then inspire others to show them how to do it. And he says that what you got here really is the basis. It's the, the crux of healing because you are a healer and you've applied this to your own journey. Yes, you did channel it. You're channeling from your higher self. And that's why. You know, when he was saying, like, you got to know that you're very sensitive and tuned into spirit because a lot of this writing and everything that's coming, you are being divinely inspired. And Eric that's... has been part of your writing with you because he says he's kind of <gasps> chuckling and he's got his arms folded. And he's like, she doesn't know that she hears me. He goes, who do you think has been helping her? <laughs> oh. 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 I love that. There's yeah, no coincidence here that you got, no. you know, pulled toward me, Eric, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. So, okay, talk about the other books, too, please. All right. Well, Hold Fast. So I wrote – the first book I wrote, guys, is The Hold Fast Method. The first one it inspired was Ride Out Parenting with Bipolar Disorder. That was my first one. That's what I used mm-hmm. The Hold Fast Method for. And after I wrote that, because it's, you know, <laughs> I looked at <laughs> – my family um, and my, my husband and myself and our beautiful daughter, River, and our my um, 28-year-old stepdaughter, Lennon, who is, uh, is Frank's from a very young, many moons ago. Um, mm-hmm. And I just looked at, look at the dynamics and I was like, wow, like, it's, it's really tough. And I had to get over myself, like you said, Eric, thank you for pointing that out. Like, I had to, to write. Uh, my way out of it, and I had to look at it and say, I have this thing. I said I wrote a. I also wrote a blog when I was pregnant called um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Pendulum Pregnancy, That's awesome. and uh, it, it was cool. It was it was really fun, and it was really cathartic. And I well, it definitely helped me. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And then I wrote um, a book called Motherhood Made Me Get Over Myself: A Metamorphosis. And the oh my god, the a humbling experience, dude. Raising you better believe it. Me a better person and slapped the ego out of my ass like no other. Yes. It did. Yeah. Like my whole, the whole thing with me was me and myself are two different people, but two facets of me. And, uh, <laughs> and so I talked about that at length. So I wanted to write a book to help parents who are bipolar. Cause I know it's tough sometimes. And um, yeah. then I was like, when I finished this book a couple months later, I was like, what the hell? This needs to be, this is right out life with bipolar disorder. This isn't just parenting. So I guess I was on to something there. And so yeah. I wrote out, hold fast, ride out life with bipolar disorder. And since that, I've also written um, 
a workbook, and these are all for sale. They're pretty cool. I wrote a workbook. It's like it's called they are um, cool. Very cool. Loving your bipolar kin. Uh, it's a workbook that you can people can order. And, I saw that. And awesome. I, I think you'll dig it. And but the best part about it is now I've also developed a course. Um, wow. That is starting. Up. I'm I'm actually having my uh, my first course. Um, April first is the launch. And it's a six-week course, and it is um, mm. called Loving Your Bipolar Kin. I wanted – I have a lot of – I've had in the past a lot of parents of kids with um, behavioral and psychological and emotional uh, challenges at who are like, what do I do? And they ask the teacher because they don't know. So I thought, you mm-hmm. know what? I'm going to write because I know – who I am, I know who I was, I know what I am, and I know what it's like to live with someone with bipolar disorder, and I know what I've done <laughs> over the years. So I said I've designed a course, and it's called Loving Your Bipolar Kin, mm. and it's an interactive online course that starts April 1st, and I'm trying to find participants. I have one. <laughs> no, come oh, on. Oh, my gosh. I'm, so, I'm sure there'll be some more out. after tonight. I hope yes. so. You know what? Okay. If you if you how do they, you'll get how do they sign up. Who do they go to? Where do they go? Huh? I where it. do they go to sign up, Bed? Oh, where do they go? I'm sorry. Um, wow, God, the link. Um, go to Samcart. Um, gosh, you know what? Did I send you the link, Michelle? Yes, I think I've got all the links here, and I'll make sure that everything is all posted. And oh, yeah. uh, cool. So that, that would be good because they can click so on it then. Can find it. Yes. And yes. I, I will make sure it's all posted on the blog. Awesome. And, and you know what? Paula. Paula, because she's in yes. charge of the YouTube channel. So if you can give that yes. to her, you can still put it in the description box of the YouTube, of this uh, yes. YouTube also. So I, um, I wrote have the... that all set so everybody can find it there and can, oh, can join. Super... And I can already think of some people in my mind right now that need this. So this is oh, that be, oh, that's so yeah. right on. I am so excited. Hey, listen, um, and I want to say, like, I've taught for years, so I it was really a pleasure for me to put this together because I like designing curriculums and things like that. Yes. Exactly. Yes. True. No coincidences. This, yes, no, absolutely not. <laughs> this, this is one of the things that you're going to be big in, I think, is blasting through labels, <laughs> destroying labels. <laughs> Seek and destroy with yeah. a napalm yeah. flame for a... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. They're on the ball. Oh, the cape on you with LD on the back of the cape, label destroyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All teachers get capes. Yes, they should. <laughs> they deserve it. That's oh, awesome. I love that. <laughs> so what else do you want to I share, Beth? You have so much to share. Really, a lot. Who, me? Yes. Yes. Oh, me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was uh, flaking out a little bit. Uh, what do I have to share? My God. Um, <sighs> what else would you like oh, to Oh, no. I would love to share um, my absolute passion for what you are doing, Elisa and Michelle and Eric. Um, mm-hmm. I I have spread the word so many times, and as you know, very humbly, but people have a really hard time absorbing the whole concept. I know. I, I know. It's, science, yeah. it's so crazy because it is science. It's all physics. I, Scanner energy is all physics. Oh, yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. I've never, I've never, I've never, I've never had a failure. Never yet. I mean, some people had the portal work, but then they had contracts that we had to revoke. We're okay, whatever. But it always ends up okay. And guess what? We never give up until it does. That's right, Absolutely. and it's mind. It's the whole concept. It's mind, the power of your own thinking, the power of your own mind. You know, it's like oh, so true. Like, and and with right, and with, with like some metaphysical help from spirit, you just gotta like let go and let God. You know. Yes. Exactly. It's powerful. It's powerful. It when, really when we when we man. combine that knowledge, that wisdom, that trust. And then we realize it's all within ourselves and the power of our mind. It, yeah. it is just like things are no longer impossible. It is no. possible. So much is possible. And but I know, you know it's been life changing for me too. It's just incredible. 
you know what Michelle, scalar, you know what scalar, uh, what your thoughts are, right? It's scalar energy. It's all yeah. scalar energy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's so it's cool. Energy, yeah. Go ahead, Amanda. What are we going to ask uh, Michelle? Oh, no, I was going to ask Michelle, how did you connect or how did you uh, rein in or harness your um, your abilities? And when did you connect with Elisa and Eric? I find I don't know, so I'd love to know. I am um, to be honest with you. I see when I was younger, I, I knew that I had psychic ability, and I was really interested in paranormal, like anything mm-hmm. paranormal, metaphysical. But I didn't. I mean, I had dreams with people that had mm-hmm. crossed over, but wow, I did cool. not actively speak to them in waking time. Like I, I just didn't. I didn't realize it. So cool. yeah. As I got older, the real shifting point for me was I went through, um, I got really sick after having my diagnosis of ataxia, and I was put on a lot of um, opiates. So I had a a really serious addiction to opiates, to Oxycontin, for about three and a half years. When I got through that and I was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was very debilitating. And I went into this, like, I was in a lot of victimhood at that point. And yeah. I remember thinking to myself, oh, my God, like, this is it. I am I thought that there, I had something bigger. And, you know, this is really weird to say because I understand this now looking back. I mm-hmm. always felt like I, I needed to help people. I knew that. Mm. I knew that about myself. But I felt like I was such a failure through school because I couldn't finish college. I couldn't concentrate oh. in school. Oh, I had all these problems, and I was just. I thought, oh, my God, like I felt like a complete loser and a failure. And I put all of my focus into being a mother, and I overwhelmed myself because I was giving to everybody else and ignoring my own desires, my own needs, and yeah. I had mm-hmm. a lot of low self-esteem. So the short, short version of this is after I had my – I went in for a 12-hour surgery, and I had a mm-hmm. yet flap reconstruction after having breast cancer. And I came out of that 12-hour surgery a different person. Just very, I was so positive. I had a new lease on life. I knew the cancer was gone. I I knew I was going to get better. And Mm -hmm. I just, it was the power of my mind. And I will be completely (sighs) honest with you. It was, I decided instead of, because I was always sick, always sick, always sick, Mm -hmm. always had a problem. There was nothing went right. It was always something. And so I decided, I was like, what if I entertained it being, it's going to be okay? What if I entertained oh, yes. it just not entertaining the negative and yeah. focusing on, I'm not going to look up things. I'm not going to obsess over things. I'm going to work my very hardest as, as much as I focused on negative, I'm going to do it on, on positive. And that started to change things. And so my vibration, now I understand that my vibration was raising and so mm. as my vibration started to raise, um, it was that year after having my cancer surgery that I met Eric. And I found him on on the, uh, on the Internet after some family members had passed away. And it was my dad that was having spiritual experiences and seeing people that had passed standing in his doorway at nighttime. Wow. And so he was telling me all this stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. And it was just, it was hitting me to the point where I couldn't sleep at night. Like I was not scared. I was just fascinated. And I was like, okay, there's, there's some, like something's going on. Something's happening with me. And Mm -hmm. I started to do research. And one night I found Eric and a month later he was playing games around me. He never left. And so it was, life life has changed. That's right. But it was, uh, the ability part was, uh, it was power of my mind. It was, listening to Eric's teachings and inviting him in more and more and being in complete trust and believing that this is what I'm meant to do and knowing it, feeling it, and just keep keep going, keep going. And it really it was like, like Amanda. Sounds like you, Amanda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, it, it is. does, yeah. Michelle. It is. That is so, yeah. that is such a stunning story. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, How about it, for Lisa? Asking. That's oh amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right, y'all ready God damn. Y'all ready to take uh, callers? Because I, I yes. know. And you know what? Oh, I'm really able to have Amanda on again 
to take calls from people who you know, yes. struggle with. I really think that you know if they if they struggle from bipolar disease and or if they have kin folks that uh, you know do. I, I think we need a, like a totally callers only session with Amanda. Yeah, uh, and Eric and yeah, I, I really. Oh, I'd think. love to, I'd love to do that for you. I'd love to do that for people out there. I can I can I can talk them through it. I can you know I'm not. I'm, I know you I, can. I'm, man. I know you can. That yeah. would be amazing. All right, here we All go. Right. We've got one caller here. The first one is, come on, come on, click, click, click. Got one from the 707 area code. Hi there, how you doing? I'm doing well. How's everybody else doing? We're good. Doing good. good. Hi. Hey, I'm what's, so going, what's your first name, baby? My first name is Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. I knew it was you. Hello. What you um, got for I, you? I, Okay, I have a couple of things. I started off with one question, but um, as I was listening to the show and I realized what the subject matter was around today, um, I felt compelled to um, just acknowledge how uh, serendipitous this call, in fact, is because I had a brother um, who recently passed who was diagnosed as bipolar um, in his young teenage years. And um, I just want to acknowledge how important the work you're doing, Amanda, is. Um, oh, and I feel sure. like the, the resources that you're creating for people um, are just going to be so impactful for generations to come. And um, so I just wanted to share that. And I also... Um, <laughs> I also want to acknowledge what Michelle was saying about trust and faith in regards to mediumship mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, about just keep going. I was, uh, I was recently guided to uh, take like a mediumship boot camp, and I was like, I don't, mediumship's not on my radar. Why would I, you know, why would I do this? But I was like, whatever, you know, just have trust and see where it goes no expectations and it kind of blew my mind in a way because I'm living proof that um, I do believe just about anybody like there, you, it's not like you, you don't need to be a superhero to connect with spirit. That's mm-hmm. right. I, that's right. There's no difference. And this is Charlotte. I'm so glad you did say that because there is no difference between myself and anybody else listening, any of us, yep. because we're all born here with this power to connect and, you know, some some just may not have the interest in doing it. Like everybody is different in what they're interested in, what they're driven in, what their purpose is in. But if you've got that desire to build that connection with spirit, there is no reason why you can't do it. That is all within your power. And the more you work on yourself, the closer spirit comes to work with you. And I'll tell you too, Charlotte, I can feel your brother. Um, so did your Aww. brother pass in, in, his, was in his 30s? Yes, yes, he did. Um, okay, oh. was it sudden? Uh, yes, it was. Um, okay, if he's guiding you, he's helping you because it's it's him that's giving you nudges, nudges to connect. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I feel it. Trust me, I feel it because um, I I also wanted to um, share and acknowledge um, Elisa and Eric because I got nudged to um, to their YouTube channel. And yeah. um, it was through another per- it was through another person, but this was right after my brother's death, um, which yeah. was a suicide. And um, and mm-hmm. I just have to acknowledge how deeply meaningful it was for me because not only did it give me like a place to gather information and understanding, but it changed a hundred percent my perception around suicide and how oh, yeah. brave somebody has to be to. Um, to be at that point in their life where they're like, you know, this is, I can't do it anymore. This is it for me. Um, okay. So I just, it, 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 I just want to acknowledge that because it, it's so, it, it really was so impactful to my healing around his death. Mm. And um, I'm just so, you know, honestly, I feel very like it was so synchronistic that, you for uh, that you four are all together and that I had an opportunity to speak with you. Yeah. Charlotte, your, brother, your brother and Eric, given that nudge, 
because your your brother and Eric came together to to draw you to channeling Eric to not only show you who you are, but to help you heal, to help you further understand and to develop a new relationship with your brother. Yeah. And I and I feel that like I I truly do believe that because it, the funny thing is is I've been joking with him and I'm like dude what are you doing over there like what are you up to and um, and sort of the feedback that I've gotten is um, that he in fact is sharing knowledge as well as, as a teacher um, yes. oh. over there. Oh wow! Yeah. Like uh, Eric, awesome. Yes, yes. Him and Eric, yep. him and Eric have a very similar vibration. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. Charlotte. Uh, yes. I just yes. wanted to. I just. I wanted to. If I could have just a moment with you. This is Amanda. I wanted to. You have no idea how touched I am by you acknowledging my work. Thank you so much for doing that. It means the world to me. There's no coincidence. It is serendipitous. And thank you so much. That you really touched me. Thank you so much. Oh. I mean, honestly, the, the pleasure is mine. Like. I I I just feel so grateful that you are here doing the work that you're doing, and I just I hope you know you have my full support in it. It's awesome, it's amazing, oh. and I think it's going to change a lot of lives. It, it, um, it already uh, is. It already and it will. So okay, so um, what initially had compelled me to call was I recently found out through Elisa and Eric that um, I have a guardian angel named Ariel and that I in fact am an earth angel and I am part of a angelic project called Project Unity which has to do with bringing unity consciousness to humanity and I wanted to see if if Eric could maybe um, share and expound a little bit on that to find out a little bit more about what it is and how I can contribute well, it's, it's so interesting because Eric says, well, and you're here. So he says, <laughs> this is what tonight is all about. And he says, this is what we're talking about. He says, this is about you connecting to your soul, but you connecting to your higher self and bringing through some of those angelic vibrations that naturally reside in you. Um, you're a healer. And so mm. he says, Healing comes in so many different forms. And he says, so really this is a path of how you heal your own pain because he says there, you know, there is healing to be done within you. And he says some of it is going to start to um, become very obvious to you as you start to feel different. And he says, and this is in a very good way. He says freedom. He talks about a peace and a freedom within you to help you connect to your higher self. And he says, and you'll help other people. There's also a reason why you connected with Amanda today, too, because there are other people, and he's talking about families, um, helping families and helping families with those that have crossed from Mm. mental illness. Um, uh-huh. or to better understand that. Um, and I, I would, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, I would like to see you connect with Amanda in the future because oh, there's nice, things that you will do, you will do together. And, and I'm, I'm sure you feel it because I feel it. I can feel the cool. connection there. So uh, however that will play out, but Eric says to do some self-exploration, um, being a healer, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to put your hands on people. Being a healer can come with your words, can come with your comfort, but he also says in writing. Mm. Well, like, like Amanda, she's a healer just because of her books. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. And her teaching yeah. and her future teaching in her school. Yeah. Huh. That's awesome. Charlotte, I'm so glad you called, girl. I knew. Thank you, Charlotte. I can't wait to connect with you. I know. I'm looking forward to it. I will um, yeah. I'll definitely reach out to you. Find That's me. Awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll give all that information. Email me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, just, well, yeah. Yeah. It'll all be on the blog. Let, let's get this done. Let's everybody share. Everybody share. Kumbaya. No. Of course, we got <laughs> away at the healing h dash art dot com. <laughs> art. We also have Amanda Green at. Tell me how they can connect. How? What's the best way to connect with you? 
Oh, uh, best way to get, get to me, you can email me at a grime. that's G-R-I-E-M-E, author, that's pretty direct, A-U-T-H-O-R, at, at gmail.com. Write to me there, and I will send you links to everything. And if you put my name in, if you Google me, stuff, although the stuff that I'm most I'm happiest with as of late and the stuff I would like to for you to check out is that Sam Cart, it's S-A-M-C-A-R-T, um, hold fast. Wait, um, S if you go friend? to Sam Cart, wait, uh, no, uh, hold fast. Uh, Sam, as in Sam, S as in Samuel, S A M. Okay. Uh, okay. Cart, C A R T. It's a it's a platform to sell things, and oh, you can go oh, there, okay. and you put in my hold fast, and you'll find all my books. Um, oh, wow. Also, yeah, it's on Amazon. They're on Amazon too, but the the Sam Cart stuff is the fun stuff that I sent you, Michelle. And yeah. um, what else? Oh, and um, I am also a radio person, and Michelle is going to be on my show soon. I've, yes, um, yes, I am. I'm yes. so excited. I can't wait. And that's I'm on. I used to be on Blog Talk Radio, and now I'm on the Mental Health News <laughs> Network. And um, my show is called Hold Fast. So if you go to MA, uh, Mental Health News Network, News Radio Network, and put in Hold Fast, you'll find me there too. That's, that's awesome. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you, My Charlotte. My pleasure. Can't Thanks wait so to meet you. Awesome. Much. And I guess we'll have to close now because only three minutes left, a little less than four minutes in a minute. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just say, too, I just want to give a, a real quick announcement and just say we've had so many amazing guests on, and we have some more lined up for the show, too. And, and so just let you all know, because I know there's so many people that want to call in and talk to Eric, and we will be doing a show to dedicate to callers as well. But we just have oh. so many amazing guests that have so much good stuff to share so thank you guys for being here we appreciate it eric appreciates it and we appreciate our awesome guests and of course mama elisa we appreciate you so much too oh my gosh so much i love you i love you so much all right everybody i love um, you all again if you want me to adopt you. you just let me know i love you okay love you, great love you. i love, love you guys <laughs> i can't wait to, no, to talk i can't wait to talk to everybody again soon and um eric I send you kisses and I thank you for all the good stuff you do. I'm sure he, he crushes says, on yeah, you. I love you. No, I feel yeah, he does. On you. Yeah, no, he does. He does. Oh, he does he's, giving me a, he's giving me a cartoon face with heart eyes. <laughs> oh my God! I knew, bong, I, knew, bong, bong. I knew. I knew. It. Thanks, Eric, because I, I I needed that. Thank you. That's a real ego boost for me. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody. I love y'all.